That's right. Nice to meet you, Arthur. Nice to make your acquaintance, Mr. McTaggart. Joseph. Joseph. I see you're a devotee of fine music, Joseph. Oh, you can't beat a nice bit of opera, can you? That was Leader. Schubert Leader. Oh, there you got me. That is one opera I've not got around to seeing yet. There's a bit of a problem with the calculators, Arthur. Oh. You have made me risk life and limb up them stairs. Keep the heat. I've got something here that'll interest you a lot more than a pile of poxy calculators. More or less. Just did me and all. <laughs> look, 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 look. Thought we'd be breathalyzed. <laughs> is, uh, is that your lunch? Yeah, I thought, uh, you know, I thought we'd make a change from Shepherd's Pie down the local. And you think that's going to taste any better? You never know, it might. I mean, it's Italian, isn't it? <laughs> it's about as Italian as a can of spaghetti. Look at it, it's absolutely crammed full of preservatives. Yeah, but at least they're Italian preservatives. I know a nice little Italian restaurant. I think I'm being picked up. Don't count on it. <laughs> Believe me, Arthur, you've made the right decision. Ah, uh, I'm only taking the goods on approval. No contract of sale has as yet been agreed. Fair enough. You'll go for it, though. Go when things are magic. Transform your life. You'd have bet that the price you're asking. There you go, Arthur. Mr. Daly to you, Sonny. Up your nose. You yeah, can see why they built Hadrian's Wall. Oi, oi, what's going on? Base station. You'll need a base station, Arthur. You never mentioned that in our negotiations. There's nothing to it. It's just a wee booster and a couple of wires that go into your phone. Young Ozzy there will fix it up for you in five minutes, no bother. Does it have to be him? On you go, Arthur. Very groovy, Arthur. Where's the furry dice? Belt up. Plunk like every trip, eh? And so after eight years at school, I then had to spend two incredibly boring years at finishing school in Switzerland. Mm, see, I'm the peace we brought you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but don't blame me. It was my father who insisted. Mind you, it almost bankrupted him in the end. So, do you work for a living now? Yes. Yes, sort of publishers. Mm. They pay me a pittance, but uh, it's quite interesting work. It's a pity I'm busy this afternoon, though. Yeah, well, I mean, I could always get in touch with you again. I mean, if you'd like, you know. Hmm. I'd really like that. Well, why don't you give me your number and I'll give you a ring tomorrow or something? Why don't I ring you? Oh. Look, if you don't want to see me again, it's all right, no, you know. I mean... No, I said I'd ring you. Now, why don't you order us a coven of brandies? Yeah, uh, excuse, excuse me. 
There you go, Arthur. Welcome to the big time. Yeah, well, you run along now, Sonny. Get back to your pee broth before your mother starts worrying about you. No, 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 nothing important, Dave. Just ringing to let you know my ETA. Lovely weather for the time of year, isn't it? I don't know, Arthur. I, I haven't looked. Oh, uh, Dave, uh, put me up a large VAT, would you? Yeah, yeah, of course. A couple of aspirins as well, if you like. What's up with him today? Are you sure I can't give you a lift back to the office or something? No, no thanks. I'll take the tube. All right, if you say so. No, I'm positive. Bye, Terry. Ta-da. There you go, Arthur. You sure you're all right? In the pink, Dave, in the pink. <laughs> well, I never. If it isn't Arthur Daly. Sorry? Oh, come, 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 Arthur. Don't tell me you've forgotten an old friend. Granger. Stuart, si Simon Granger. That was a mouse that threw me. I didn't know you were out. I've been out for six months, Arthur. I was frightfully well behaved. Well, that must have made a change. Still gamefully employed in the city? Ah, oh, uh, afraid not, oh boy. The pinstripe brigades are might narrow-minded when it comes to embezzlement. Well, you don't look as if you're on your uppers. No. I'm running a little car hire business now. Doing quite nicely, actually. Um, upmarket trade. Executive cars and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Well, let me let me get you a drink for old time's sake, Simon. Oh. Dave, same again for Mr. Granger. Yeah. I told you he's not himself today. I might be able to put a very attractive business proposition your way, Simon. Arthur, now that I am out, I'd... I'd rather prefer to stay out. <laughs> no, no, this is strictly kosher. You have my word. Oh, there you are, Arthur. That would be uh, 2 40 altogether. Yeah, all right. Slate. Shall we? All right. Hello. Oh, listen, I've got to tell uh, you, I was no, at the no, supermarket. No, 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 this is well, con confidential, Terry. Confidential. Do sit down, Simon. Well, uh, do you want a drink, Ranger? No, 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 just, just this. All right. What's up with him? I just said no to a drink. Arthur is being very strange today. Logger? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just had a decidedly dodgy phone call from him. Oh, yeah. Every breathing, all that, was it? <laughs> nah, nah. No, no. Just the whole phone call was sort of pointless. But I couldn't get him off the line, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'll get him all the time. Cheers. Arthur Daly here. I'm phoning from my vehicle. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not speaking from my home. I'm mobile. Yes, yes, yes. I have the latest uh, car telephone. Do you have one in your vehicle, Johnny? I will not obfuscate with you, Joseph. It works like a dream. But 200 songs I cannot do. Arthur, have you not grasped that I am offering you the most modern car phone on the market? Push button keypad, automatic number repeat. If you bought one of them in the shops, you wouldn't see much change out of a grand. And you've still got five left, haven't you? Aye. Right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take them off your hands for 150 quid each. I can't say fairer than that. I'm offering you a very high investment profile here, 900. You're a hard man, Arthur. Well, I do have a certain reputation in the business world for a bit of plain talking. Mind you, you'll need to uh, pay someone to wire them in for you. No, no, no. My young Terence take care of that. Oh, don't be daft. It's a highly specialised job. I'll get young Ozzy to do it for you. Oh, God. Cool. No, what, you're apprentice moron? Ex-British telecom engineer. Ex? What was he doing, a little freelance privatising? Look. You've offered 900. Make it the grand, and I'll throw in young Aussie free to wire them in for you. What do you say? Oh, come on, pal. Put it there.
Hello? Oh, what do you want? No, 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 I'm sorry, mate, I can't today. Well, I just can't, that's all. Yeah, all right, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, if you want, yeah, yeah, all right. No, you're quite right, Arthur. I've got absolutely no lot. Salary? What salary? I'll see you tomorrow, Tao. Hello. Oh, no. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I thought it was someone else. You can't... Oh, that's great. No, no, I fixed it all up. It's all ready. Smashing. All right, I'll see you later then. Yeah, tell her. Bye. Oh, hello there, Terry. She's all ready for you. Right, where is it, ain't I? This is it, Terry. <laughs> Do what? Charming little vessel, you know. Full of character. <laughs> full of bleeding holes, more likely. You promised me a luxury cabin cruiser. Well, this is as near luxury as you'll get in this day and age, Terry. Oh, do you, Cedric? I think you'll find she's, she's, she's very reliable. Well, that's more not in sight for you. Right. Well, how, how'd you start it? That's it, there you go. Right, uh, right hand up. The right? Yeah, it's starboard port or something, isn't it? It's starboard. Oh, that's starboard, there you go then. It's all right for you oh, just sitting there, isn't it? It's straight out to sea, we're all right. I like what the ocean we. I don't know, Arthur. Sounds useful, I must admit, but 350 quid, that's a lot of bread. I mean, it's not as if a car telephone is essential to me. I mean, it's more your rich man's toy. Not essential, Dave. Not... Dave is a sine qua not. You have got to come to terms with the technological age in which we live. I mean, look, you imagine. You're stuck in traffic jam, rush hour, Hammersmith Bridge, delay for a very important business meeting, and there is not a non vandalised phone to be found for love nor money. What do you do? Pick up the phone, bosh, bosh, bosh. Hello, this is David here. I am unavoidably delayed due to a traffic situation westbound. Kindly hold a meeting pending my arrival. Instant communication is the essence of the microbiological revolution, Dave. Uh, leave it out, Arthur. I mean, what important business meetings do I have to go to? There you go again, underestimating the important role you play in society. Dave, just because you don't frequent the stock exchange frequently does not mean you are not a vital chip in the great computer of life. My old chip and a great computer, I like. You really think so, Arthur? You know, sometimes I feel as if I... I'm talking to myself. I have some very good news for you. Shall we discuss it over a little medicinal? To the old tub. To the old tub. God bless her and all who's sailing her. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> um, to the Titanic. Nice one, yes, yeah, all right. <laughs> to the Titanic. <laughs> uh, do you think we'd better make for sure before it starts piddling? Oh, God, yeah. Go on, you drive. All right. Madam, just sit back and relax. <laughs> not. Get us back to shore, love. <laughs> uh, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> You man the lifeboats and I'll sing a bite with me. No, I'll keep on drinking and wait for a taxi, I think. Now, is that or is that not a viable product? Seems to be satisfactory, aren't they? You'll have your executives queuing up to do business with you. I'll get Terry and my engineer around to you tomorrow to we'll wire them in for you. Yes, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Whatever suits you, Simon. Terry will relieve you of the readies. Uh, may I? Please, please, go ahead. What's your markup on this, old boy? Very modest. Very modest. Granger's executive car hire. Can I help you? It's Mr. Granger, sweetheart. The two black Mercedes haven't been booked out before tomorrow morning, have they? No, sir. Not yet, sir. Splendid. Well, don't let them out before two o'clock. 
Fine. I'll be on my way back to the office soon, so I'll see you later. Bye. Morning up. Bye. Terry. Now, now, Arthur. Where have you been? Not available all day yesterday. Phone off the up this morning. One of these days you'll push me too far. Yeah, well, we live in hope, don't we? <laughs> now, come on, there's no time for window shopping. I promise Granger you and the moron will be over there by 11. Oh, have you seen this? What? Prohibited from direct or indirect connection to any telecommunication system run by British telecommunications. Action may be taken against anyone so connecting this apparatus. Eh? Hey? Looks like you've been well kippered, doesn't it? Me swear, Arthur. You just peel it off. Mind you, it's illegal to sell a phone that doesn't have a green circle or a red triangle. What are you saying? Do you understand English? Oh, he calls that English. I'll put it in simple words, Arthur. The law does not allow you to connect a phone unless it's been approved by British Telecom. Green circle approved, red triangle not approved. Yeah, but... No, no. I mean, your punter's not going to know that, is he? Yeah, of course he is. It's Granger. He's a villain. Well, in that case, he ain't going to care, is he? No, but he'll use that knowledge to beat the price down. Looks like you've got a problem, doesn't it? Clear, brother. Follow me, big boys. This one is a bit more expensive, but it does have a lot more features, not to mention a 50-number memory. Mm. I can offer you this in red or magnolia. Oh, very nice, very tasteful. Um, could I have a look at the, um, the blue one over there? This is a more basic model, of course. Arthur! Uh, well, I think we'll have a further look around before we make a decision, but you've been most helpful, very kind. Arthur. Sawdust in the gearbox? Dear, oh dear. Yeah, 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 I quite agree. I'll tell Mr. Daly as soon as he gets back from holiday. There you go. Yeah, bye bye. I hope it's all here. Yeah, yeah, he paid up like a good one. How did you get someone like Granger to give you the best part of a grand for two dodgy phones? Though? They are not dodgy, Terence. Mr. Granger recognises a bargain when he sees one. Yeah, and you recognise a mug punter when you see one, don't you? I represent the spirit of enterprise, Terry. I'm the kind of businessman who made this country what it is today. I'll go along with that. Listen, I've got to shoot her. Give us a couple of notes, will you? Thank you. I'll see you later, then. I don't suppose I need ask who you're working for. May I? Thank you. Go. Cool. So, we retain the basic hamburger, right, but we serve it up with piles of salads, very crisp and fresh, OK? Like, um, like this. Or... We stress our lean meat policy. We offer them an alternative to French fries. Say, um, a spicy rice dish. And we offer them a whole meal sesame bun as an optional. We could call it the health burger. Say. Good 
emoluments. Sir Ronald, I really believe this gives us the possibility of enhanced market penetration. Sir Ronald, I'm sorry. I tried to tell your daughter that you were I in conference. I want a word with you. Get out. It started again, hasn't it? The private detectives. Real rough trade this time, isn't it? Terence McCann, small-time villain. And you spent last night at McCann's place, didn't you? Yes, I happen to like him. He's after your money, Sarah. But he doesn't know about my money. Why don't you try and patch things up with Rodney? <laughs> Look, what's wrong with Rodney? Well, his name, for a start. Also, he's a wimp. You marry Rodney, and I'd be willing to make a very generous settlement. You'd still be very independent. You must be joking. He's a decent lad. Good background and all. You just want me to marry some upper crust twit so you can see me in Tatler, don't you? Well, I shan't. Maybe I'll marry Terry McCann. Do you think I've grafted my way up from the slums just so that you can go back to where I started from? Here we go again. Listen, don't you understand that I don't give a damn about your glittering career? Sir Ronald Bates knighted for services to the hamburger? Or was it contributions to the Conservative Party? Do you know how much I spent on your education? One of the best boarding schools in the country. Have you any idea how much money I've invested in your future? Oh, I see. So I'm an investment now, am I? I never told you how much I spent on your operation, did I? Your nose job. Five and a half grand. That cost me five and a half grand. And if it wasn't for that, you'd still have a hooter like Jimmy Durante and no man in his right mind would even look at you. I'm going now. Sarah, Sarah, listen. Terry, where were you last night? Like trying to get hold of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Got anything on the keeper of a red Ford Cortina F Foxtrot G Golf V Victor 952 Romeo, Yankee 2 over. Yankee 2 from MP, message received, hang on. Hang on, he says. MP to Yankee 2, we are 1 1 1. Delta 1 1. Five gallon, realistic capital. You dropped me right in it, Terry. I promised her indoors a slap up tandoori at the Golden Sari. Why, do you want me to come too? And I. Oh, God. No, I did not. I want you to pick up some dough from another telephone job. As it was, I had to traipse halfway across London and do it myself. Yankee 2 to base, Cummings. Thanks to you, the evening was a complete unmitigated. No, I didn't. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. With Chisholm? Arthur Daly. What a nice surprise. Cold for the time of year, isn't it? It's working, Aganga. Well, take it, take it. <coughs> You're causing an obstruction, Daly. He wasn't Yankee wearing his hat. Here. We're reading around, can you repeat? Do you want a top up? No, 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 it's lovely. Nice little Dolly's tea set. It's a present. Oh, yeah. From a young lady. Mind your own business. Ooh. Sorry, Terry. Sorry I show concern for your personal well-being. I must be off. Oh, can I take it you are uh, still available for work? I mean, at your convenience, of course. I wouldn't want to interfere with any of your extraterrestrial activities. What's up with you? You must have made a packet out of those phones, huh? Yeah, I did. It was a good investment. In fact, I'm picking up another half dozen from McTaggart tomorrow, but if okay. you don't want to involve yourself, you just say so. I mean, uh, you know. Oh, that's all right. I'll... Well, well, I'm not in any trouble. No, it's not. I'll give you a hand, that's all. Don't yeah. put yourself out. Shut up, will you? All right. Show yourself out. No, oh, very generous, Terry. Very ge... Oh, I like your flowers, dear. <laughs> oh, not today, thank you. Hey, steady, steady, steady. You're in plenty of trouble, Terry McCann. I'm not Terry McCann. Terry, you've got the wrong man. He's in there. What's happening? Oh, Terry, that's him. You Terry McCann? Yeah. Oh! oh. oh. Sunshine. I just feel awful about it, Terry. 
Don't be daft. And it's not your fault your dad lost his bovro, is it? The thing I don't understand is what was all that stuff about no money and working in a publisher's? I mean, what was that in Ava, though? It's just that with most men, I tell them who I am, it gets, well, it gets very complicated. No, Sarah, it gets complicated when you tell them fairy tales. That's when it gets complicated. Yes, you're probably right. Anyway, I'm not after your money. I like you. I like you. Well, at first, I thought it was just going to be a quick, you know... Yes, that's what I thought, at first. Oh, no! What is it? It's Arthur. Who's Arthur? Uh, look, if he starts getting nosy, just ignore him, all right? I'll leave it well out. Jerry, a bit of luck finding you here. Yeah, an amazing stroke of luck, innit? That is looking very nasty. Mm. What, uh, what was all that rumpus about, anyway? <laughs> that was nothing, really. Case of mistake and identity. Oh, I see. It was my father. Sarah? My father sent round some thugs to beat Terry up. You see, he doesn't approve of my relationship with Terry. I'm sorry, my dear. Terence hasn't had the courtesy to introduce us. Sarah, this is Arthur Daly. Arthur Daly, this is Sarah. Sarah Bates. You're likely to make your acquaintance, my dear. And what, uh, what line of work are you in? She works for a publisher's office. Publishing? I don't work. You don't work? I don't need to work. My father is Sir Ronald Bates. Oh, fascinating. Sir Ronald Bates. Not the Sir Ronald Bates of, um... Yes. Yes, that's right. Bigger burgers. The bigger burger for the bigger appetite. Quite a little success story there, isn't there? Yes. And, uh, are you a friend of Terry's? No, he's not. Colleague. Colleague, my dear. And a friend. Because I'm a friend. Simon, what an unexpected pleasure. Don't tell me. I know why you're here. I bet you don't. Terry, if you want to invest in another couple of car phones... Arthur, listen. You're in luck. I am just about to send Terry and young Rob Roy McGregor here over to cop another half dozen. Terry, did you make some tea for Mr Granger? I have just had a courtesy call from the old Bill, Arthur. They were asking questions about telephones. Oh, my God, you didn't... No, Arthur, I did not mention your name. They seem to be under the impression that I might be the proud owner of some dodgy radio phones. Fortunately, the two cars were out at the time. I don't understand. You don't need to understand, old chap. You just need to take back these two phones. But these are yours, Simon. You bought them fair and square. Fair enough, Arthur. I shan't argue. I shall simply tell the police that I bought them from you in good faith. No, 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 no. There's no need to be hasty. If you want me to take these back, I will take them back as a personal favour to you. It's extremely decent of you, Arthur. You owe me, shall we say, 1,200? You're joking. You only paid nine. Loss of business, don't you know? General inconvenience. He's stitching me up, Terry. Yeah, I was thinking that, yeah. Here, take these in, will you? Ozzy, take these in. I'm very disappointed in you, Simon. Here am I trying to help you modernise your business. If you're typical of the captains of industry, it's no wonder this great country of ours is in dead stuck. Thank you. Goodbye, Arthur. This is a very heavy blow, Terry. But how did the old Bill know he had two dodgy phones? But they are not dodgy phones. <laughs> are they? How are doing, though? I'm in a very tricky cash flow situation now, Terry. Very tricky. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. I don't trust you, Daly. Why can't McCann deal directly with me? Because, Sir Ronald, I am Mr. McCann's business manager, and you must appreciate the delicacy of the arrangement. I mean, we are talking about two very young people very much in love. You sure? No question whatsoever. I might even go so far as to say that I think a wedding bell situation is definitely on the cards. All right, Daly, you're on. You won't regret it, Sir Ronald. But I am not paying 50% up front. Well, we're both members of the business sector. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. You get a thousand now. And the other nine grand, when I am 100% certain McCann isn't coming within a mile of my daughter ever again, all right? Well, one grand up front. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. I oh, wonder, uh, not a word to McCann about this. Not a word to my daughter. You make a dummy out of me daily and you'll need a new face. You can rely on me, Sir Ronald. Oh, I see you're a patron of the arts, like myself. Get out, Daly. Yes, of course. It's upside down. So 
I'm afraid the blood tests were positive. Eh? What blood tests? Uh, the blood tests we took at your last visit, Mr. Evans. No, I'm not Mr. Evans, I'm Mr. Daly. Um. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Wrong file, I actually apologize. Uh, yes. Right, uh, what can I do for you? Well, Doctor, is there any really serious illness, you know, disease, that only happens at the age of, well, comes about with maturity? And can you pass it on to your children? What can you pass on to your children? This disease. What disease? Any disease. Look, why don't you just tell me the symptoms and let me make the diagnosis? Oh, no, no, I haven't got any symptoms. I'm, um, I'm calling on behalf of a friend. Mr. Daly, as a doctor, I think I can safely say that I see all aspects of life. There's no need for embarrassment if your complaint is of a private nature. Alternatively, if you prefer, I can refer you to a clinic which specialises in venereal disease. Oh, no, 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 it's not that, no. I, I just want some information. Mr. Daly, do you know how many patients I have waiting outside? Yeah, I know, it's shocking, isn't it? It's no wonder more people are going private. I'm with Farty myself. I beg your pardon? P-H-A-T-I, Farty. Personal Health and Treatment Indemnity. Mr. Daly, what is it that you want? Um, excuse me, do you uh, have any uh, do-it-yourself medical books? Upstairs, sir. First floor. Thank you. And there's... there's definitely no cure for this disease. What's it called? Spotter's Syndrome. No, I'm afraid not. But Terry seems so fit. Well, that's what makes it such a cruel disease. Shall we, um... Oh. See, for years after it's been detected in the blood, uh, the patient doesn't know anything about it. And then suddenly, wallop. The palsy, the shakes. Before you know where you are, you're falling over the furniture, cracking your shins on parked cars. And eventually, of course, it's uh, fatal. Oh, poor Terry. Yes, it's very sad. The first symptoms are due to show themselves any day now. Very sad indeed. I mean, no woman wants to spend her life looking after a man like that, does she? I wonder why he hasn't mentioned it. Ah, well, Terry's a very brave boy. I mean, he wouldn't want to know I've told you, but I, I felt it was my duty to tell you, my dear. Yes. Oh, I hope this won't make any difference to the very happy relationship you have with him. No, no, no. of course not. Doesn't give us very much to go on, does it, miss? Don't you remember anything else about them? Might have helped if you'd phoned us sooner, of course. Well, I didn't think too much about it at first, did I? It's not as if they stole any phones. All they took was the stickers. Stickers? I see. Well, can you remember anything else more useful? No. Except the younger one was called Terry. Huh? And he definitely, uh, he definitely called the older one Arthur. The one with the hat. Thank you, miss. Thank you very much, miss. <clears throat> It's all right, yeah. I'm never so brave, you know. <laughs> oh, my God, the filth. Can you drive? What a dream, Arthur. Drive this car. Better. Anywhere. Just get rid of it. Oh, Mr Chisholm. What an unexpected pleasure. You've got a chauffeur now, Danny. The business must be looking up. Oh, what? Oh, no, no, it's just a lad that uh, watches a few cars for me. Running a youth opportunities programme, are we? Well, in these hard times, one has to do what one can to help the young people. Very touching, Daly. Where is your young assistant off to in your motor? Oh, the, um... The car wash. Good, he should be back in a few minutes, then. Ah, oh, ah, oh, well, now, sometimes at this hour of the day, you get quite a queue there. I'm in no hurry. Inside. Oh, yes, yes, certainly. Keys somewhere. No sign of anything here, Gav. You do realise that no, you No, don't... Danny, I don't have a warrant. Do you wish to insist on one? If you do, I will nick you for stealing sticky telephone labels. 
I'd rather Nicky was something more substantial. But telephones. British Telecom approved, I hope, Daly. Oh, yeah, standard issue. Have been getting any cross lines lately? No, no, no. No complaints at all. In fact, I wish I bought a few shares. But... Keys. Jones. You have no right, Mr Chisholm. I'm going to phone my brief. Open it. You bloody moron. This is an outrage. Oh, I quite agree. Not to worry. I don't know what you're looking for. Oh, you do look tired. You know what he wants, don't you? Long weekend in Landugno. I'll tell you what, I'll have a bacon sandwich as well, all right? All right, yeah. Fine. All right, all right, so you're not a moron. But you must have known all along that your boss was flogging me stolen property. But no necked, Arthur. It's just our mate in Taiwan and dead dodgy. What are you telling me? And he used your old system, you know, for sale net came in. It's the one wants them anymore. It's your 50 watt blaster. Eh? The frequency control's a bit ropey. A lot of spurious radiation gear off and all. Look, will you speak English? Your conversation sort of gets mixed up in other systems, you know, like uh, CB radio or police radio. Aye, that's possible. That'd explain the police breathing down your neck. Oh, my God, I'll have to flog them. Where are they? This way, Arthur. I've sold them already. Aye? Took them to your pal of mine when I seen your visitors. Oh, come on, come on. Where's the readies? Oh, that stays with me, big boy. I've got to get paid, you know. McTaggart pays you, not me. Aye, that's the theory, but McTaggart skipped. Skipped? Aye, skipped. Done a bunk. Bugger daff into the blue beyond, know what I mean? That is the last time I put my trust in your race, my son. A right bunch of McRobbers, and no mistake. Oi, 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 where are you going? Come on, you owe me. I'll set Terry on you. I don't think you'll find me, Arthur. No in Glasgow. Cheerio. Arthur. See you, Arthur. You're a vampot. A right vampot. I've been looking all over for you. Right? Yeah, a team with Thank two you. sugars, please, dear. Terry, I've been outwitted. No. Yeah, by a moron. Well, it had to happen eventually, didn't it? And I nearly got my collar felt by Chisholm. The old telephone scam is down the plug hole. I've lost a fortune. That's what you keep telling me, innit? The days of the small businessman are over. No, I don't want your sympathy, Terry. I'm not going to give you any. I could have done with a little practical help. Like what? Well, giving young Aussie a smack. Two cents. Oh, I'm just staring at. Nothing, nothing. Everything all right, Terry? Yeah, well, it was till you came in, yeah. Good, good. Your young lady, she well? Yeah, she's fine, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, charming girl, that Sarah. You seem to get on very well together. Yeah, we do. Good, good. I'm very happy for you. Very happy for both of you. You uh, haven't had a barney with her or anything, have you? No. I'm going to have one with you in a minute if you don't watch out. Oh, don't be like that. Enjoy your sandwich. Oh, so oh look. look. They've all got their bleeding wives with them. I could kill you, Julie. It's not my fault. Sid swore it was a stag do. Hang about. That one's on his Todd. Bat chance. Brewer's Troop. I'm all in favour of Brewer's Troop myself. I mean, it's strictly no refunds, innit? I once made 75 quid off a yank who passed out the minute he handed over the cash. Yeah. Oh, shit. Here we go.
think we've got a punter, girls. Rather you than me. Good, good evening, dude. Do, 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 do any of do any of you have the time? Ten thirty-seven. Thank you very much. Must be a beginner. Oh, for a beginner, isn't he? See you later, girls. You're not, are you? Darling, I'm two weeks behind with the rent. Careful, Judy. Looks kinky to me. So what? No, uh, I mean that is, um, yeah, yes, yes. But uh, you, you don't have to do anything. I, I'm not the sort of man you think I am. No, I'm sure you're not. I, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not looking for, um, you know, I'm not looking for that. Something quite different. Well, that will be a little bit more expensive. What do you have in mind? I've got a motor outside. Could I explain later? Not until we discuss the money, love. Well, I, I don't know. Um, hundred quid. And no monkey business involved. All strictly kosher, 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 kosher. Oh, fair enough. I've just got to pop to the ladies. I'll meet you in the lobby. Ooh. Surprise. God, Andrew, what are you doing here? Uh, annual company do. <laughs> it's rather splendid, actually. Are you staying in the hotel? Yes. No, 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 I'm... Uh... Oh, on your own, are you? What? Yeah, you don't, don't let me keep you, Andrew. You carry on. Oh, no, I've got plenty of time, Arthur. All the time in the world. Actually, how, how about a quick sniff, Dad? The bar's still open. No. Yeah. Um, everything all right, huh? Yeah. Oh, you seem a trifle overwrought. No pressure of work, you know. Well, you should know. You are my accountant. Yeah. Oh, I say, I heard the most marvellously funny story tonight about a VAT inspector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. now, apparently, this VAT man um, was uh, responsible for uh, a group of companies in the rat trade, you see. <laughs> well, there, there, there was this Cypriot company, and it went into spurious liquidation. And... This is purely professional, Andrew. Ready, lad? Pure, pure, purely professional. Yeah. <laughs> Just what I was thinking. <laughs> Makes you sick, doesn't it? other woman. Hey? How could you do this to me? What are you talking about? Who are you? Oh, Terry, come on. Come on, what? Oh, who are you? How'd you get in here, anyway? Get, get your clothes on and get out. Go on, on your bike. Come on. All right, there's no need to shove. No need to shove. You're lucky I don't give you a slap. Go on, and piss off. Dear, oh, look, what was all that about, eh? Hey? Mm, I wonder. No, don't get the wrong end of the stick. But I, I've never seen her before in my life. I've got no idea who it was. No, it's a set-up, you know. I'll bet your dad organised this. Look, Terry, it was bad timing, but really, I don't mind. It's no big deal. You talked about no big deal. You got it all wrong. I, I don't know who she hey, is. don't get so emotional about it. I told you, I don't mind. You're free to do whatever you like. <laughs> We're really very similar. I mean, you're not the only man I'm sleeping with right now. What? <laughs> well, surely you realise that. Oh, shut up, Sarah. Well, you're just saying it's not even a score, aren't you? <laughs> no. It's true. And even if it is the first time you've seen that girl, it's still true. Terry, I don't want an exclusive relationship with you. Look, look. 
But we haven't known each other very long. No, I don't ever want an exclusive relationship with you. Not with any man. Terry, I think you're really sweet. Sweet? Oh, God help us. <gasps> oh, you're so wonderfully old-fashioned. Don't patronise me. I don't understand you. I mean, look, what's wrong with two people sticking together for a little while, eh? Because it's boring. Oh, it's boring, is it? Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'll tell you what. As it's so boring, I'm going to bed. Alone. Well, usual. Yeah, have a word with Chell, will you? He's a bit out of sorts. He split up with that new bird of his last night, and I think he was quite stuck on her. Oh, that's that's very bad news, Dave. It's very sad. Get yourself a large drink. Cheers. Come on, I'll have a lager. Ah, I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you going to have a word with Chell? No, I don't think it's the right moment. I think I should respect his privacy. First time he ever done that, Arthur. I didn't see you coming. I didn't see you sitting there. Here, here. You've seen this? Come no, 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 I must go. I'm no, no, come here, come here. It won't take a minute. Look, look, have a look. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, who'd think that bigger burgers could go bust just like that, eh? Huh? And you see what old Sir Ronald Bates has done? He's only legged it to Spain to escape his creditors. <laughs> You're right. I'll tell you what, I was feeling a bit low myself. And <laughs> then I read that cheered me up no end. Do you want a drink, son? It does have its tragic side, Terry. Does it? Well, I think so. You know what that old sod did to me? What? He only planted a bird in my flat, didn't he? Hey? Yeah. I'll come back with Sarah, and there she is, right as rain. Trying to split us up, you see. Dave? Mind you, God knows how they got in there. You still got that set of keys I gave no, you? No, no, you took them back months ago. Hmm. You can't trust anyone these days, can you? No. Dave? My dear probably did us a favour in the long run. I mean, she was making me look a right dummy, wasn't she? Well, I'm very glad to hear that. What's that meant to me? No, I mean, you're well shot of her. Oh, yeah. Terry, hmm? what's a bampot? Bampot? Well, it's Scotch for right wally, isn't it? I need a drink. Dave! <laughs> 